We are shifting focus now to uh, the big story that is happening here in the national capital and that is between India and China. Now, close to three years ago, 20 of our Jawans were martyred in Galwan. It was an unprovoked attack from Chinese PLA side. Now, for the first time since then, India and China are at the talks table. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will be holding a bilateral with Chinese Defence Minister in just a few minutes from now here in Delhi. This bilateral meeting is on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation meeting tomorrow. Now, India, which is chairing the Eurasian Regional Forum this year, has a range of bilateral issues to discuss with its fellow SCO members. There are several other bilaterals outside of China also that are on the docket for the, for the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, both today and tomorrow. But the prime focus is going to be on this particular bilateral, which starts in a few minutes from now with the Defence Minister of China. Disengagement and de-escalation of border confrontation is going to be primarily focused. Transgressions and provocations both in Ladakh and Arunachal are going to weigh heavy on Raksha Mantri's mind when that meeting happens. Now, we saw three days ago, India and China had held the 18th round of commander-level talks over disengagement at the line of actual control. This is 18 rounds since we've seen the kind of transgressions that have happened in Galwan. Both sides said that they had a frank and in-depth conversation on the friction areas. There are at least two that remain now, Depsang and Demchok. China's foreign ministry has said that after the meeting, according to common understanding of the leaders of both countries, the two sides have now held in-depth exchange of views on expediting the resolution of relevant issues, which essentially means that there has been no breakthrough as far as Depsong and uh, Demchok are concerned, at least in the 18th round. Now, so far, both sides have disengaged in at least four other areas along the line of actual control in the eastern Ladakh area. There are buffer zones that have also been set up. But these two sticking points still remain. Here's a breakdown of what exactly happened during that core commander meeting that happened three days ago. Core commander uh, on both sides, the talks were held on the 23rd of April. Both sides had a candid exchange of views on relevant issues. They agreed to maintain close contact. The agreement is going to continue dialogue and to speed up the settlement. They also agreed to maintain peace and tranquility in border areas. Meanwhile, even as we're seeing these talks happen, both at the military level and now at the diplomatic level as well. But the provocations coming in from the Chinese side continue unabated and it's not just Eastern Ladakh. We've seen these provocations as far as Arunachal is also concerned. The renaming controversies that we've seen, three provocations in six years. It started in 2017 in April when China renamed six places in Arunachal Pradesh. This move was after the Lai Lama's visit. They wanted to make Arunachal Pradesh a part of their territory. In December of 2021, China released a standardized uh, name of 15 uh, places that were marked on the Chinese maps. They were marked as South Tibet and not as Arunachal Pradesh that is in Indian territory. In 2023, in April this year, which is this particular month, 11 places again were renamed by China in Arunachal Pradesh. It even includes a town near the capital of Arunachal Pradesh, near Itanagar. And yet, they want to have a claim on this particular territory. So the provocations continue both in eastern Ladakh and in Arunachal along the line of actual control. We've seen the kind of infrastructure build-up that has also happened along the line of actual control on the Chinese side. So today, in a few minutes from now, when both defence ministers sit down at the talking table, what's on the agenda? Is there a border thaw that we could see? That's the big debate. Before I get in, both my panellists, uh, we are getting some news coming in that the bilateral, in fact, has begun between uh, Li Shangfu, Defence Minister of China, with his counterpart here in India, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh. Akash, my colleague, getting us the details on that. Akash, uh, in a few minutes from now, we perhaps uh, could be seeing some uh, photo opportunities, some photos coming out of that meeting. How long are we expecting this engagement to go on for? Uh, so, yes, first of all, this meeting has begun. In fact, just a few minutes back, we have got this uh, from uh, our sources, uh, uh, which are uh, present inside uh, the particular venue. And in fact, this is the most awaited meeting of the day. Total four bilaterals were planned for this particular day, and China was the last one for this particular day. 6.30 is the time when it has got, it has got started. And now we are expecting uh, that it will go till 7 or 7.25 or, or 7.15. It can go to any, any time uh, near that. Also, it is very important, uh, Poonam, because as you rightly mentioned, there are a number of issues other than the regional peace and security. We know about uh, uh, the Galwan clash in 2020, and this is first meeting between the defense ministers after Galwan clash. We know uh, that Lee Shangfu has 
assumed uh, the office in March 2023, and this is his first visit to India. So it, this meeting is very, very important. Both the countries are going to discuss a number of issues, uh, specifically uh, the issues of uh, Eastern Ladakh sector. This is what we are expecting. In fact, uh, 18th round of commander level talks happened on 23rd of April. Nothing concrete came out, and this is why people are very hopeful. Depsang and Demchok are two areas where India wants this engagement. In fact, uh, uh, you know, buffer zone strategy is what uh, uh, people are talking about. In fact, command in commander level talks, in fact, we are learning from our Indian Army sources that this was the very same thing that was discussed, but uh, nothing uh, was the outcome of that particular meeting. Now, yes. everyone is hopeful ahead of uh, this SEO's uh, defense minister's meet uh, that is going to happen tomorrow. This uh, meeting is very significant. In fact, uh, defense ministry sources are confirming that we can expect some sort of statement after this particular meeting. Absolutely. And all eyes will be on that meeting. For the moment, Akash, thank you so much for getting us the latest. We'll keep coming back to you. But what exactly are we expecting from this particular meeting? Whether there is going to be a thaw in the ties that we've seen uh, between the two countries. To decode that, joining me on this broadcast is former diplomat Ashok Sajanhar. Andrew K. P. Leong, international and independent China strategist, also joins me. Uh, Ashok Sajanhar, I'd like to begin by asking you. Can we expect something concrete to come out of this meeting? Well, uh, we've just had, you know, as your uh, uh, correspondent also just now mentioned, that we had the meeting of the uh, army commanders just a few days ago, and nothing really came uh, out of that. Now, if uh, China was waiting that, you know, when the defense minister comes here, and then he is going to uh, show something, show his hand, offer something, then uh, that could be one uh, particular aspect, but I don't really see anything happening on that uh, score. You have mentioned, you know, the large number of provocations that have taken place in uh, recent uh, months, not uh, going back even to 20, uh, uh, you know, when uh, the Galwan took place, 2020. Uh, but uh, even in uh, more recent months uh, and uh, in weeks, we have seen that there have been provocations. Mm. So we have not seen anything on the part of uh, China to lessen the tensions in any way. Mm. So I don't really foresee anything happening on that front, anything positive coming out of that front. What I've seen really China doing is in this region mm. that it has been uh, sort of, you know, flexing its uh, muscles. And uh, uh, I think both sides will have their say. They will uh, uh, say uh, read out their official positions, mm. mention their official positions. But I don't uh, foresee anything uh, positive uh, in terms of either de-escalation or disengagement on the two outstanding issues hmm. that happening uh, during this particular meeting. Hmm. Who knows? Andrew K.P. Leong, can we expect uh, much from the Chinese side? Uh, as, is there any rig wriggle room, so to say? Because we've seen uh, even as 18 rounds of uh, military level talks have been happening, there are certain provocations that come to the fore from the Chinese side. Like the renaming of uh, certain places in Arunachal Pradesh where China wants to claim it's their territory, call it South Tibet. Well, I think that there is very little chance uh, that uh, either country will concede uh, on uh, uh, their claim, respective claims. And it's been going on for a long, long time. And I think there is too much at stake for both countries to be just stuck in the past uh, as far as the border disputes are concerned. I think that the, 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 the more positive uh, way forward is to set, a, set aside these border disputes, agreeing to disagree, and concentrate on larger areas uh, where uh, both the interests of both countries um, uh, uh, greatly uh, 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 coincide to a larger extent. For example, the role in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, and, and cooperating with the developing world, which is now gaining um, ascendance uh, mm -hmm. in relation to um, that the, um, uh, the, the the geopolitics uh, of the West. Um, so I think that there are lots of at, at, at stake um, between the two countries uh, to cooperate, not so much uh, entirely agreeing with one another, uh, but uh, the two countries should be on the same page. But there is no chance that 
um, either country will concede uh, on their um, claim territories. As I said, it's been going on for far, far too long. And then the, the, the leaders on both countries have sent a clear signal um, that um, uh, any kind <laughs> of confrontation would be disadvantage, uh, would be uh, detrimental uh, mm. to the interests of both countries. How then do we be on the same page uh, is what I want to ask you because diplomatically as well we've seen uh, the kind of commentary that has come to the fore. India's external affairs minister has also come out and said that uh, the ties between the two countries can never be normal uh, unless uh, there is de-escalation, unless we are back to status quo and China ensures that they unilaterally do not try to change it. Well, well, as I said, I mean, uh, the most important thing is to for both the leaders on both countries to, again, um, uh, send a clear signal to their um, commanders uh, and do those in the field um, to at least not to um, uh, escalate, um, and, but also uh, working out. Uh, on larger issues like the, you know, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. As I said, the developing world is now gaining ascendance. Mm. Um, you can see what's happening around the world with uh, even the Middle East and, and, and also the relationship with Russia and then where India and, 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 and China seem to be um, uh, more or less on the same page and rather than just be beholden to, uh, to, the, to the West hymn book. So I oh. think the whole world is changing quite rapidly. Um, I think that it, it would be destructive uh, for uh, India and for China to be stuck in the past. Sure. We have to move forward, Ashok Sajanhar, but uh, how do we do that? Like I said, how do we find common ground when the one thing that we uh, have to talk about and tackle, neither sides want to concede? Yeah, you know what uh, this gentleman is saying? Uh, this matter, of uh, particularly of Arunachal Pradesh, is not all that distant. Uh, you know, it is... Uh, because China has uh, constantly been removing the goalposts and sort of, you know, bringing them uh, 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 forward. Mm. Uh, this whole issue of uh, naming uh, Arunachal Pradesh as a South Tibet and claiming 93,000 square kilometers of Indian land as its own, mm. that is not very long ago. That is only a very recent. When China has decided to accept the McMahon line with Myanmar. It is the same McMahon line that is coming here. So it is only uh, very recently, 2005 onwards, that it has started claiming uh, this region also. And I think uh, the fact is uh, what uh, the gentleman is suggesting. India did exactly that when in 1988 we had the visit of uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. After that, five agreements were signed. Mm. And it was agreed between the two sides that uh, we will, uh, on a parallel track, we will keep uh, the border issue on a back burner. And we signed three agreements, mm. 93, 96, 2005, 2012, 2013, thereby saying that uh, we will uh, continue to discuss that, but also have discussions on bilateral relations and take them forward. Sure. And what has happened in 2020, we had... Uh, China in violation of all its uh, uh, commitments in all the agreements, it decided to move its uh, troops forward. Yes. This was entirely violative of the agreement signed in 1993 and 96. So, you know, it is not uh, the once again uh, pushing uh, this uh, to one side, putting this on the back burner. It doesn't work. We mm. are, uh, India is uh, uh, engaging with the developing world. India is engaging with all the other countries. Unfortunately, not with China, because China has violated these agreements that had uh, existed without giving an explanation and as to why And one too many times, violated. if I must say so. So far, we have not really been uh, given any explanation as to why China violated those agreements. And one too many times, uh, unfortunately, which is why the kind of uh, lack of confidence, uh, as one would say, in taking what China says at face value. What really happens in this particular bilateral between the two defense ministers? We'll find out in just a short while from now. That meeting has already begun. Whether there are some concrete steps that are taken or is this just more of a setting of the tone? We're also going to be seeing the foreign ministers meeting that is going to happen as far as the G20 is concerned. We're going to be seeing engagement uh, between uh, these two and the two countries uh, coming forward as well. We'll keep a track of that and much more, but unfortunately, I have run out of time. And I'd like to thank you both gentlemen for joining us here on this broadcast with your perspective.